Hi everybody, welcome back to the Tetrix RoboBench video series. This is Tim, and today I want to talk to you about troubleshooting, and more or less troubleshooting in general. What do we do, or what's the process we, we use when we run into a, a problem? Because that's something that's going to happen to everybody. At some point or another, things are not going to work like we expect them to. So we need to have a plan in place, because that's what's going to save you when things don't work right. You have to have a plan so that when you face that, you have a way of resolving it. So that's what I want to talk to you about because I think it's very important, number one, to realize that when things go wrong, it's not, you shouldn't really look at that as the end of the world. You should look at it as an opportunity because the reality is that we learn more sometimes from when things don't work out and when we have to problem solve and work through the issue than when we do if everything goes as planned. So troubleshooting becomes very important. And the first thing that I hope everybody understands is that the one of the most important things you can do is to establish a routine. Now, whether that's to make yourself an uh, actual checklist or a mental checklist so that when you don't know at all what's going wrong. You start checking things off the list. I'm gonna check this first. I'm gonna check my power. I'm gonna check my mechanical pieces. I'm gonna check my, my electrical pieces. I'm gonna make sure that I go through that sequentially so that I cover everything that I need to cover to be able to isolate the program or the problem. And that's the next thing is when you can, it's really important to try and isolate issues because if I've got this whole big system of robot that I'm trying to figure out why it's not working, that can be a little overwhelming. But if I break it down and I can say, okay, I'm gonna start with my motors. Yeah, my motor is moving. Then I know that I can check that off the list. Um, my piece is structurally stable. So the pieces that I don't want to move, they're not moving. So you go through that and you can say, okay, I wanna turn my power on. I've got power. I know that's not the issue. So you begin to eliminate things one by one by isolating them. So that's a very important part of troubleshooting. The other thing is, it's really vital. We have to be observant. We have to pay attention to the details. We can't just look at things. We have to use all our senses. If I'm looking at a piece that's supposed to move, how does it feel? Is it moving smoothly? If it's supposed to move smoothly, it, it, does it? do I hear anything as I'm moving it? Is there any weird noises that I don't expect to hear in, in that motion? And then finally, vis visibly, am I seeing anything that's out of the ordinary when I actually try and move that? So use all of your senses in actually observing, and again, the devil's in the detail. So you really need to watch closely. What is actually, am I seeing when I look at that piece that's supposed to be moving? And the other thing to, I think we, we really need to make sure of when we're talking about troubleshooting is what's the expectation? As I think of something and I say, oh, it's not, it's not working. Well, I've, uh, in that statement, I've said, well, I have an expectation of what it should do when I categorize it as working and what doesn't meet that. And we have to understand that sometimes we have to be realistic in that. If I made a piece like this, and I know that it has a mechanical range of motion that is a fairly uh, consistent what I want it to be, and then I hook that up into a remote control and it only goes part way, is it the piece that's broken? Or is that the operation of the remote control? Because sometimes because of the algorithm that's involved with a remote control, it might not allow your mechanical range of motion to actually go the full range because of the limitation of the, the remote control. That doesn't mean that it's broken. That just means that that's the limit of the remote control. So we need to understand that so that when I see that, I think, oh, that's not broken. That's just the, the, the reality of how that remote control works. And that brings me to the other point that I think we need to understand is that the better I understand how my system components work together, the, the better my troubleshooting skills are going to be, and the better I'm going to actually understand, again, the system as a whole. It's kind of a revolving circle, kind of like the chicken and the egg. As I work through troubleshooting issues, I begin to understand the system better, and then also that lends to 
um, helped me build better. It helps me understand the system. It's kind of a, a revolving circle. So um, again, I think we need to look at troubleshooting opportunities as opportunities and not failures. I think too many times we we think of troubleshooting issues as, oh, this is a failure because something doesn't work. But instead, I think we ought to really see it as some way to really have a deeper understanding of how things work. So just to wrap that all back up and recap, let's let's go through it again. We wanna remember that we wanna establish a routine. Uh, we wanna make that list that we have. We wanna isolate to uh, parts as much as we can to be able to find the issue easier. Pay attention to all the details using all your senses. And again, let's look at this as an opportunity. So I hope you found that good information that you can use to build those troubleshooting skills so that you can have fun, build some robots, and come back and see us.